Good evening from Joburg. I am Vusi Tembeguayo and this is Let's Have It Out. For those of you who may not know me, I'm a two-time world champion public speaker, a venture capital fund CEO, a best-selling author, and I promise you, a phenomenal singer. Admittedly, only in the shower. But just to be clear, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a global business speaker. Calling a global business speaker motivational speaker is a bit like calling a bookkeeper a chartered accountant. Very, very different. Honestly, I like to think of myself as, I suppose, the son to the most phenomenal mother and father to the most amazing, amazing souls. And I've been blessed with an amazing life. When I'm not traveling the world, inspiring leaders or working in with uh, leaders to help them drive exponentiality, I spend countless hours championing, funding, and access to opportunities for small businesses. But because of the past of South Africa, a past which you could argue continues to be pervasive and present in the lived experiences of many people of South Africa today, small is probably a pseudonym for black. Overwhelmingly, Black people are finding themselves starting or inheriting smaller survivalist businesses just to put food on the table. Whether it's the spaza shop, uh, the taxi owner, or the taxi driver, the funeral parlor, or the back of the yard mechanic, there can be no denying that over two decades after what was positioned as freedom, we are not yet free to access all the opportunities. Certainly not the substantial ones. Meanwhile, big business, and you could infer from that, again, based largely, but not exclusively on the past of our country, big business to mean white, continues to enjoy the benefits of a developed economy through access to bulk work on contracts that are driven not only by government, but more specifically by the private sector. Whether it is the stadia for the World Cup, or roads that you and will drive for which they will try to toll us, complex ICT projects to bring the home affairs infrastructure to the new age, or even government schemes like paying out pension funds, all substantial opportunities in truth are positioned or manipulated to benefit large firms. Consider this. There are 55 million South Africans. 81% of them are black African. Five of the largest banks, eight of the largest mining houses, six large food retailers, none are black African owned. So, how then can we build black businesses that are competitive in the world stage if the mechanisms for transformation don't deliver that result and sometimes are manipulated not to deliver that result? What is the role and responsibility of the black consumer, for instance, in driving transformation, the things we buy, the places we go to? How can we ensure that the system of exclusion that exists is systemically decoupled? This is Let's Have It Out. So you can have your say here on our show. And to have your say here on the show, you join us on our Twitter timeline by hashtagging hashtag L-I-O-H. Let's have it out. To discuss this topic with me and answer some of the questions, help me break through some of these uh, challenges, is Pete LaRue. He's the CEO of erstwhile Afrisaka, now rebranded, and he'll tell us a bit about that in a minute. They're an organization that exists to protect the rights of businesses in South Africa, and he's going to tell us a lot about whose rights they protect and how we can leverage either their expertise, their opportunities, their spaces, but most importantly, their access to drive transformation in the broader business space. I'm not so sure, though, that Afrikaners need specific protection or promotion, but Pete will tell us all about that. Pete. Luhanet. Uzi, good and you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. My pleasure being here. Thanks so, for inviting me. So you've just been on this rebrand. Tell us about it. So Vusi, on Tuesday we relaunched, we rebranded. It's a part of a new phase for Afri Saka and will yeah. now be Saka Licha. Yeah. And um, we used to s call ourselves a business watch watchdog. Yeah. We'll still do that. We're pretty much a free market organization. But we think, uh, we need, we think to um, promote a healthy business environment and to create wealth, uh, we need to do more. And we think we'll do two things. We'll, um, we want to make sure that our members are um, protected and well, uh, well 
uh, well guarded in, against risks, including, uh, let's say, political risks or any kind of regulatory environment, that red tape thing. And then uh, the other thing we add is we want to say, well, let's, perhaps we can, um, we can provide privately some of the infrastructure that uh, an economy depends on. That, let's say, dispute resolution or ESCOM, let's say there's, there are problems with ESCOM, can we help solve that by um, encouraging private energy, um, energy generation, for example. Sure. So we're sure. expanding into that, and we think Sarkalicha is the, is the name for that. Tell me a bit about, because I've gone through some of the literature of, of your organization, some of the articles that you've published, and I found some of the positioning statements interesting. So one of the questions I wanted to understand is, from a demographic perspective, whose interests do you represent? Well, Vusi, we're an organization, we're a member-based organization. We have about 12,000 members. Yeah. They're mostly Afrikaans members. Yeah. And uh, they're mostly small and medium-sized businesses. So yeah. it's very rare that we have large companies who um, join us. Yeah. And mostly it's the individual businessman with a few employees or maybe just uh, single owner enterprises. Um, but whose interest do we represent? Well, of course, it's a member-based organization, so we want to create wealth for our members. But business is about creating wealth for everybody around them. That's how you make money. So we say our business is to help our members create wealth and create wealth for them, as well as all communities wherever they do business. Sure. How do you marry that with the need to transform South Africa and help businesses of color become part of the mainstream economy? Lucy, I think um, uh, it's not at all at odds with that. Um, we want to make sure that our members are better at what they do. Being a businessman is about adding value. Sure. And if we can get our members to add value wherever they are, let's say to consumers or to business partners, if we, we enable them to do that better, then, um, then that's a win-win situation. Sure. You, how would you position it? Do you represent Afrikaners or the African-speaking community? How does that, is there, how does that work? You see, uh, there are all sorts of jokes about it. When you start Afri asking Afrikaners who are Afrikaners, you can, yeah. <laughs> you can have a long conversation about yeah. that. But so mostly it would be, mostly white Afrikaans speaking people would be our members. Yeah. But um, uh, maybe a few percentages are across population groups and we're very happy to have them as members. Yeah. Again, just help me understand it. So w w what is it about, the, and maybe we're not seeing it, right? Because in my mind, I'm trying to understand how do we create a platform that is about transforming the South African economic base and allowing smaller black players who've been previously marginalized to become part of the mainstream economy. If you're representing white Afrikaans business, small or big, um, why does that section of the population need representation? What, what is it about that section of the population that needs a representation? Well, I think in th the first part of that answer is there's, there's always something like social capital that can be unlocked. Networks of um, trust, networks of business relationships, and that can be harnessed to create value. Yeah. Um, it's the old social capital thing. And so what we'd like to do is unlock social capital from that community and uh, you know, add value with that. Um, if we can do that, then we think it's wonderful and it adds to whatever positive projects around us. The, th the second part um, of that question is, you, you want you say, so how can we as um, an Afrikaans business group, um, why would there be a specific need? And I think part of the reason here in, in, in currently is that there is, you see, there are regulations and legislation that, um, that are actively make it more difficult for white Afrikaans speaking businessmen to do what they do well. Um, and so our uh, part of our mission is to look at if that le legislation regulation is fair, uh, if it adds value and if it makes the economy better. And if it doesn't, then we'd like to propose alternatives and we'd like to protect our members' interest where, the, where it is harmed. And sometimes they are harmed. So what would your members' perspective be on an issue like, say, transformation or BEE? Well, our members, uh, our members can have many positions. Um, our position is that wherever there's value to be found, and I think there's a lot of value to be found in c crossing the divides that were artificially erected before. Um, economically, it doesn't make sense to isolate yourself. And if you look at the success of, um, uh, of uh, merchant leagues and of chambers of commerce over history, the most successful ones were those that didn't isolate, but found ways to cooperate and expand their trade networks. Uh, we'd like to emulate that, but we think um, business, and especially small business, Vusi, uh, is particularly harmed by regulation. Um, and when you introduce regulations, you introduce layers of tough stuff. A, a person with little capital has to get through 
before he can uh, turn a profit. And, and there's a lot of that in South Africa. When we come back, I want to have a conversation with you about how do we, again, I, I need to understand this concept about how do we represent members of what to me seems like a group that already comes from a position of power, but you'll tell me about that. And I also want to understand what role your organization plays in ensuring that black South Africans are part of the mainstream. But we'll have that conversation in a minute when we uh, come back.